Hi, and welcome to Jules Voto's Photo Focus. How do vintage manual focus lenses perform on a high megapixel digital camera? Keep watching to find out. When the Nikon D800 and D800E were introduced in 2012, Nikon published a technical bulletin on how to get the best image quality from these new high resolution cameras. They even published a list of recommended lenses. Nikon stated, and I quote, to take full advantage of the 36 megapixel resolution, use lenses that produce maximum sharpness. They also said to shoot two to three stops down from wide open for the best image quality and not to go beyond f8 because at that point when you really reach, reach f11 and smaller apertures you lose sharpness to diffraction. So all the lenses on that list were lenses that were current at the time and there were no 50 millimeter lenses on that list, no normal lenses on that list. The only thing uh, close was the 60 millimeter 2.8 G macro lenses. And of course, there were no manual focus lenses on that list. Now, as any of you have watched any of my previous vi videos may know, I like using some old manual focus lenses. Uh, they're very easy to use on mirrorless cameras, and uh, I think they work out great. But that got me to thinking, uh, if Nikon was only recommending these fairly new lenses back in 2012, um, what about these older lenses? Uh, now, they seem to perform fine for me. I was happy with their performance. Uh, so, but I decided to do a test. So I decided to test some 50s. Uh, normal lenses from 45 millimeter up to 60 and test them on my Z7 which is a 45 megapixel camera and also then look at them on my Z6 shooting under identical conditions. In fact my standard test setup is behind me which I've used numerous times. I have two LED lights actually those lights are set exactly as they were right now they're set exactly as they were for the tests. So I set the camera up on a tripod and uh, other than just manual focus vintage lenses, I also tested a few autofocus lenses. Uh, but again, everything was focused manually. So I started out with the 45 millimeter 1.8 Tamron, okay, fairly new lens. Uh, the 50 millimeter 2.0 Nikkor HC. This dates from the early 70s. It is multi-coated. Also, the 50 millimeter 1.4 AIS Nikkor, and a 55 millimeter 2.8 Micro Nikkor. Again, also multi-coated. All the AI and AIS lenses are. And uh, also the 60 millimeter 2.8 D micro Nikkor. This is an old screw drive autofocus lens. So um, set them up, shot the pictures, evaluated them, and in every single case, and I shot at three different apertures um, with these lenses. I shot at 2.8, 5.6, and f8. And um, while some lenses were better than others, actually out of this group, the Tamron uh, seemed to perform the very best. And I would say the 55-2.8 and the 60-2.8 were next, uh, pretty close to one another. Uh, but the thing I noticed, and they all look better on the Z7 than on the Z6. Uh, and uh, I was expecting possibly the lenses that may have been a little weaker would not look as good on the Z7, again, because of what Nikon stated and others have stated that you need the very best for these high megapixel sensors. So then I wanted to go a little step further. So I pulled out my old 35 to 70 AF Nikkor. This is not the D version, it's 3570 2.8. So I shot this one, 
and then I pulled out a lens I know uh, widely considered to be excellent, the 24-70 to 2.8 Z lens. Okay, so I added that to my uh, set of tests. And uh, the 35-70 to 70 actually, and I, and I shot it at um, 45 millimeters, 45-50 to 50 millimeters, because I wanted to stay close to the other lenses, the other lenses that I tested. And uh, actually that turned out to be the weakest of all the lenses. The 28-70, to 70, I would put that just right be at 45 millimeters, I would put that right behind the Tamron. But the thing that surprised me was not with the not with the 24 to 70 to 8, not with the Tamron, because they, they are newer high quality lenses, but with the older ones, they still all look better on the Z7. Now, I don't know, maybe I got something wrong, I don't know. Uh, but as far as sharpness, as far as center sharpness and edge sharpness, in every case, all of these lenses at each of those tested apertures look better on the Z7. So I looked at the Z7 seven images at 100% as I did on the Z6 um, images. Then I downsampled the Z7 images to the same size as the Z6, uh, as the Z6, and still they looked better. Uh, at, there was no case where a Z6 image appeared sharper. Now there's more to lenses than sharpness. Uh, you got flare control, you got bokeh, you have other factors, distortion. But as far as sharpness, I can say that all these lenses work great on the Z7. So I decided, you know what, let me test a few more. So I pulled out what is considered to be the most unsharp Nikon lens ever. The original 43 to 86 3.5 zoom. It's a push-pull zoom, okay? It's a 3.5 maximum aperture. It stays 3.5 throughout the zoom range. So I tested this one on both the Z6 and the Z7. And I think it, um, I think it's reputation is well deserved because at 3.5 it was extremely soft on both cameras. Uh, it sharpened up a little bit at 5.6. I also shot it at f8. Uh, but it did not match any of the other lenses, even the 35 to 70. The 35 to 70 28 was, was a great lens when it was introduced. I owned it back in the day. I think I had the D version. Um, and I always uh, I used it quite a bit, and I thought it was a great lens. Um, but this uh, 43 to 86 uh, just doesn't compare to any of those lenses. It's very small, lightweight, compact. Uh, if you're going to use it stop down, I guess it could work okay for some things, uh, but uh, the other lenses are all sharper. And then I did one more thing. I looked at the 105s. The 105s have a very good reputation. Um, the Nikon 105, the original model, the uh, 105 Nikkor P 2.5. Then I also tested a more, a more recent version. Well, if you could call 50 years recent. Uh, this one dates from the early 70s. This is the 105 PC, so it's multi-coated. Uh, it was a different optical formula in the early 70s. Uh, and then I tested the AI version, which is basically the same optical formula as the PC. And uh, the old lens really holds up well. In the center, you really can't tell them apart. I would say maybe the new ones are slightly better in the, on the edges. At the edges of the frame, that's where you're going to see an improvement uh, with the newer lenses. But if you're shooting portraits, um, you don't really care about the edges, do you? Uh, if you're shooting you know, a single person, uh, actually, it may work out better if it goes soft. So um, what's my conclusion? Well, I'm a little confused, honestly. Uh, I expected some of these older lenses to not perform as well on the Z7. I figured that maybe they would perform better on the Z6. Now the Z6 is 24 megapixel, and the Z7 is 45. Uh, I don't know. I uh, I would I had figured that um, 
these weaker lenses, I'll call them weaker lenses, the 35 to 70, of the, the 43 to 86, would not look as good on the Z7 as on the Z6. But even with the, with the unsharp 43 to 86, it was a little better on the Z7. Uh, but overall, the best lens was the Tamron. Of course, it's a fairly recent uh, prime lens. Primes are in most cases, high-end primes, high-quality primes, are in most cases going to be better than an equivalent high-quality zoom. So uh, I would like to hear your thoughts on this, your experience with this, uh, using old manual focus lenses on high megapixel cameras. And it doesn't have to be Nikon. It could be a high-resolution Sony. I know a lot of Sony users uh, are using a lot of these old manual focus lenses, a Canon user. Uh, you know, some of their cameras, I believe Sony has a 60 megapixel camera, uh, Canon has a 50. Uh, so I'd like to know your thoughts on how these lenses are performing on these high resolution sensors. And if you see any difference, if you also own a lower resolution uh, digital camera, what your experience is in comparison, uh, the, the optical quality, the picture quality, between a lower megapixel camera and a high megapixel camera. Okay, so that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I usually publish a new video every Wednesday morning at 11 a.m. Eastern Time. So I will talk to you next time.